All right, Aloha, and welcome to another Aloha Friday episode with Jackson, freaking Campbell, and Tyler Devereaux. Man, excited to be here, excited to be back in office, excited to be breathing in this Maui oh. air. Woo! Ready, likewise, man. likewise, man. Super grateful to be back from such a, an amazing trip. We just yeah. got back from Peak Partnership. It was a fantastic trip. And I'm really excited for the topic we're going to dive in today because chances are you use these tactics and these trips, that, these ticks that you're, these tricks that you're going to share on this episode and probably this last trip you probably used oh, them. Oh, always, bro. Off, like often, so they're going to be fresh on your mind. But today we're going to talk about how to quiet the noise. Love it. How to quiet the noise and how you can like find that, find that solace um, and chaos. Before we dive into some of these questions, is there anything like you want to just throw in off the top there about maybe the importance of finding those moments? Uh, I think it's critical, man. I think it's critical to be able to find the peace within, uh, you know, a, a peace of mind, yeah, you know, yeah. within our own lives. Because, dude, the world is noisy, man. The world is noisy. Like, it's just noisy. And so we got to find, we got to expect it. We got to just plan for it. And we got to know how to quiet things down in our lives when things do get noisy. And it's just expect for it to happen. So, yeah, I mean, I think that, I mean, that's about it. Yeah, yeah no. Just, just understand, plan for it, prepare for it. I'm going to help you plan for it and prepare for it. And expect it. <laughs> yeah, like, oh, yeah. It's not going anywhere. No. It's, it's always going to be there. That's what's interesting, man. Like you think your you think your life is noisy right now. You think things are noisy. Well, wait until you continue to climb, man. That noise gets louder and louder and louder and louder. You just have to understand how to quiet it, you know. And what's what's the actual important noise? Yeah, yeah, right? like, identi exactly. Identifying yeah. what actually is important. But okay, let's dive in here. Got some questions for you. What are some of your go-to methods for finding that solace, for finding that moment of yeah stillness? Um, I pray, and that's big for me. Yeah. Like when the world is, I and mean, you think about a prayer, right? No, no matter what you believe in, like just, just think about that for a second. When you pray, think about what you're doing. Like you're, at least how I pray, I'm bringing the most important things to the forefront. Mm. Like I'm bringing gratitude to the forefront. Mm -hmm. I'm bringing the most important things, my goals, right, yeah. to the forefront. So you're, you're literally, I don't pray about my fears and my fears. Like I'm praying about what I'm looking to accomplish. Yeah, I love that. I actually shared a, uh, an example of that with, and I want to make sure that this landed, you know, at peak, when I shared an experience in Little League when I was uh, up to bat and, you know, game was on the line and I kneeled down in the batter's box, or sorry, the uh, on deck circle instead of prayer. And I talked about what I prayed for. I didn't pray to hit a home run. Like, I didn't, that's not what I prayed for. I prayed for just confidence and good sight and a pitch that I could hit and then gratitude that I was in a position to, you know, make an impact for my team. So prayer is one yeah. of them. Meditation's huge for me. Like, I don't know. It took me a long time to really start meditating. But when I really started to meditate, bro, if I don't, I, I know when my life is like starting to get noisy. Yeah. Like I can feel it right. And I'll be like, oh shit, I haven't meditated for two days, you know? So now I have this tracker. I gamify it, right? I have Love this that. app that I use and it tracks how many, how many days in a row. And uh, dude, I, I want to, <laughs> I, I want to have all those days in a row, you know, yeah. it's like, it's like a game. You gamify your meditation. That's been big, big for me. And then another one. So just like tactics, right? Prayer, meditation. Another one is the journal. The daily journal is big for me. Yeah. Um, I'll forever be grateful for Dow for putting that together because so the good. daily journal is huge for me. Like listing out my gratitude and then bringing in my top three goals for the day, come hell or high water. Um, it brings so much clarity. Like people think that they're unmotivated. Now they're just uncertain mm. on where to place their, uh, you know, their attention and their focus. So yeah. basic, basic level. Those are some tools that I use. Yeah. Okay. Quick question on the prayer thing. Mm -hmm. When you're traveling, you're often around a ton of people. Yeah. And there may be times where you like, even, even, even in the office, right? There's people here, people coming in and out often. And there's times where you need to maybe snap into a certain, certain way. And I've noticed that you, that you do by doing that through, you do that through prayer. Yeah. I know a lot of people feel like prayer is private and they need to do it alone. So how do you, in those moments, how do you, how do you, how do you, how do you pray? Uh, well, I do pray quietly and by myself, but it doesn't matter what everybody else thinks. Cause usually when I'm, when I really need to get into that zone, what am I going to do? I'm going to get on a zoom call to train students. or I'm going to get on a zoom call to train employees, or I'm going to get on a, right. I'm do, it's doing something to make sure that I make an impact on someone else. So it doesn't matter what everybody else thinks. What matters is, the most important thing which is making an impact right 
Right. And, and that gets you into that mode. Totally. I just wanted to point that out. It's a special thing that you do, dude. It's like, it's something that sets you apart is that even like when we have work meetings and we like get together, like to kick off peak, we kicked off peak as a team with a prayer Yeah, and it, and it really does. And it's, and it's made an impact on me. I want you to know that Thank it's you, made man. a huge impact on me because it really does. Like, I, as you kind of just explained, I don't want to rehash too many things, but it does help you bring the gratitude to the forefront and what you're looking to accomplish to the forefront. Totally. And whether you believe in a God or whether you believe in yourself or whether you believe in the universe or whatever it is, it's putting those positive intentions to the forefront Totally. to help that momentum and help that movement towards what it is that you're seeking to do. Yep. Very impactful. And I just wanted to point that out. I had multiple instances where I got the opportunity to pray with people backstage before they went on stage for peak. Cool, bro. It was very cool. It was very cool to like, have that moment and what it did is it really just like kind of centered everybody and stopped everybody and fo and really brought everybody together mm. to have that same focus and that same intention moving forward before that. going on stage well you just said it's huge like as a group right yeah it brings everyone together with that unique focus yeah that's awesome and like i'm sure like i i, I don't think they'll mind this but I, I i met with yannick and marichelle in their group yeah before they went on to pitch their deal to to the sponsors yeah and i could tell they were all pacing like different like they were all scattered if like if they could only see from what i was seeing it was like they were all scattered they were all pacing around like trying to go over what it was they were going to say and i didn't even realize they were all on the same team before they were getting ready to go up so i like kind of huddled them together and i was like guys you guys maybe try a prayer yeah. maybe like just like in any way it was very impactful Sick, and they bro. sent me a message after how impactful it was. And like, I just wanted to share that so everybody else can really understand too, no matter what it is that you believe in coming together as a team and setting that positive intention, whether it's a motivation, whether it's a prayer, whether it's an affirmation, whatever it is, setting that intention as a team. So the clarity is clear moving forward. Yeah. It's incredible. And it's a powerful thing. So I just want awesome, to point that out. Man, I love that you did that, dude. That's cool. That's cool. So Ty, diving in here. Can what, I mention one more thing? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. One more thing that I do. Um, and you've mentioned, I, I guarantee you noticed Inky doing this, but I just want to, anybody who was at peak, and you noticed me doing this probably, but I want to, I want to be clear on what I'm doing, okay? When I get done saying a prayer, I get done, you know, saying my affirmations, or I get done meditating, like I will, like I'll, I'll, I'll hit my chest, right? Yeah. It's called an anchor. And I'm anchored because you feel, you just feel a certain way when you're doing those kind of things, right? Mm -hmm. I'll anchor it. So you'll notice sometimes when I'm up on stage and I see the crowd, right? And they're all standing up and they're all cheering and they're clapping. What am I doing? What am I doing? Because I want to remember that. I want to anchor that. Like this sense of, uh, this heightened sense of, I want to, I want to anchor that, right? Because yeah. that is powerful. It's very powerful. You saw Inky do it too. Yeah. Mark my words, you go back and review, you probably noticed anyway. Oh. Inky didn't hit his chest. He hit his leg. He hit his leg. Twice. Multiple times. Mm -hmm. And twice. He would always do it twice. Mm -hmm. That's his anchor. Yep. So he's not just doing it to prove a point. Now he can do it to prove a point, but you're also doing it to remember like in those times when you're feeling things that are just like out of control, you can anchor. You can, you can anchor is what it yeah. is, right? It's called the trigger and anchor. You're anchoring it so you can trigger it later. Yeah, right. No, yeah. maybe we do another episode on anchoring. I would love and to, And that, that physical, like that, like when the physical and the spirit, like the spiritual, when it all comes together as one, that's what that's doing. Oh, that's we super, should, bro. Super, let's, hey, let's super, do it, super man. powerful. Yeah. Okay, dude, but coming back here. What are some tips that you can share on how to quiet the nose? So you, how to, how to quiet the noise, the nose to focus on your goals. So what are some tips that you can share there that, that you, that you um, use? Number one is just to focus on things that matter, man. Like, here's a question that I'd ask for everybody. Like how much time have you really spent on the things that really, well, how much time have you spent on the things that don't really matter? Like how much time have you spent over the last 60 to 90 days on things that don't really matter. Like that's depleted energy. Mm -hmm. What's interesting is that's what's killing most, most people. That's what's killing you the yeah. most, man. It's the yeah. distractions, right? Especially, especially the things that you don't think are distractions. Like, so, so what do I do? So focus on the things that really matter. Like I, I believe that we can only manage like in business, right? I believe that no person should, I, I call it the one to five rule. No yeah. person should oversee more than five people. And in life, I believe that it's the exact same thing. In our lives, I believe that we should only oversee one to five major things, right? One to five major things. So what things really matter in your life and have you defined them? You know, I was talking to Zach Jones. Shout out to Zach Jones if you're watching this. Uh, he was talking to me, dude, you just had twins. Huge shout out to Zach Jones. Beautiful yeah. family. He's closed on his first deal, got the trophy across the stage, but I could tell like something was up on his energy. Yeah. And so I called it out to him. He's on stage, right? And I called him out to it at the Luau. And I, I mentioned his energy. And he was like, 
he was like, oh, you, 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 my energy. Like, and so he's like, yeah, man, your energy's good. And I was like, no, bro, your energy was shit. And he's like, oh, what? And I was like, your energy was shit. Something's up, man. Yeah. Something's up in your life. I Love can tell. It. And he's like, you could tell that? I'm a good reader of energy, bro. I could totally tell. I push. I also know who you are, you know? He's like, oh, bro, I, my energy was totally shit. Like, I was trying to fake it, you know? Well, so then we get down to it. What is it? Well, you just had twins. Yeah. He's like, how do I balance this, man? I'm like, first off, you don't. Balance isn't real. Like, true balance, it ain't real, man. Yeah. But you have to truly identify what is the most important thing and then understand how to prioritize those things. Because if everything is important, nothing is important. Mm. So, for example, my focus, okay? My focus looks like family. Business vision is number two. So that's business vision for MFM, MFCP. Training, that's training for team members. It's also training for students. And then marketing. Like if you were to take my top four, those are my top four things. Marketing, content, all those kind of things. Mm -hmm. Uh, if you add an, another five, well, I'd probably go into training, but events that I do. But those are my focuses. Think about all the other areas that happen. Yeah. Insurance, moving, rent. Like, dude, there's a freaking million, million, million things that come at me. Yeah. But if I focus on all those, man, nothing is important, right? Yeah. So you have to truly clarify the same, same thing that I told to, to Zach is that, man, you have to, what's your most important things? It's like, I haven't, I haven't really... I haven't really identified. I'm like, that's the problem. The problem isn't that you have twins. The problem, the problem isn't it that you don't have time. The problem is that you haven't identified where you should place your time. Yeah. So like, once again, the question is over the past 60 to 90 days, have the things that matter the most to you mattered enough to you over the past 60 to 90 days, have the things that matter the most to you mattered enough to you. And if not, then yeah, you probably have a lot of noise in your head, man. A lot of noise in your head. Like, have they mattered enough to you or have you allowed something of less importance to matter more, which is probably the case, which once again is why you're finding that your mind isn't at solace, right? Yeah. Anyway. Quick question. Yeah. It's not on here. It's not on, it's not on our outline here, but it's something that just, that just popped up. Fire it, bro. You went through your four or five things, yep. family, business, business vision for MFCP, MFM, training and marketing. Mm -hmm. I have a question, bro. No person should oversee five to six things, right? Where does your self fall into that? Mm, good. Self is above everything. Okay. Self is always on there and it has to be number one. Yeah. I love that you just asked, asked this, yeah. dude, because if you do not take care of yourself, you're not going to be in a position, man, to take care of anybody else. I see all these people, amazing people, man, and I have these conversations with them. They want to make an impact on others because they have great hearts, right? Yeah. But what do they do? They ignore themselves. Mm. And I'm just telling you that you kind of have to be a little bit selfish, mm -hmm. meaning focusing on yourself. Yeah. But by focusing on yourself, it's not selfish, dude. It's selfless mm -hmm. because you are. You want me to read you a message that Brittany said to me yesterday? It's, it'll tie this in perfectly, bro. Yeah. I slept, bro. I got home from peak and I slept literally the whole day. We're talking the whole day, man. I woke up at eight, got some breakfast, went back asleep. Uh -huh. Woke up at one, got a little food, went back to sleep. Woke up at four when the kids came in for a second before they went, went back asleep. And then I slept the whole night. Like I slept, dude. And I kind of text Britt. I was like, oh my gosh, like, you know, I can't believe I just woke up. I'm, I'm, I'm so sorry, you know? And she said, good. That's exactly what I was hoping for and why I've tried to stay out of the house all day. A fully recovered and respite, rested husband is better than a persistently tired one. Mm. A fully recovered and rested husband is better than a persistently tired one. Pause. So think about how powerful that is, though. Yeah. Because I'm somebody who wants to make an impact in everyone's life, right? And even though I say you should put yourself first, well, I have to look in the mirror to do that mm. same thing. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, yes, I go to the gym and yes, I do these things, but there's some times where you just got to freaking do nothing. Totally. I'm just grateful for a wife that, cause I'll tell you, I know that there'd be a number of wives that I come home from a trip like that. And they're like, Oh, okay. You're tired now. You just poured into 1500 people, but now you're tired for your family. Okay. That's okay. Great. Yeah. Go take a nap. My wife's not like that, man. Brittany's a beast. Brittany understands that for me to be able to pour in sometimes I'd like fully, Sometimes, yeah, I got to decompress, man. I love her for that. So. Dude, I knew that was the answer, but I yeah. really just wanted to point it out. Yeah. Before you can take care of anything else, you have to take care of yourself. Totally. You have to. And you're great. You're a great example of that. Thanks, You bro. do, man. You do take care of yourself. I've been on the other side of that where I forgot about myself. And oh, let yeah. everything else become the priority. And I suffered. 
yeah. in every sense, like every every sense, like mentally, physically, financially. Like I suffered yeah. in all of those spaces because I wasn't focused on myself and I was focused on everything else. You have to. Have you to, have bro. to make it a priority in order to be able to make the impact that you're looking to make. 100%. Didn't mean to get us on a little sidebar That's there. That's not a sidebar. That's huge, bro. I love it. So moving forward here, you started to go back into the – so again, over the over – the past 60 to 90 days yeah that's the question yeah have the things that mattered the most to you mattered enough to you right yeah yeah so number one identify those things number two then eliminate the non-essentials like eliminate it these yeah. little things if you just eliminate it that's what i told zach too i was like zach bro you've added twins you've added all these responsibilities what if you removed like what if you removed and he's like nothing i was like well what you just added a whole two lives to take care of and you didn't remove anything yeah. well no wonder you're exhausted bro <laughs> you know yeah remove stuff like social media is an example I, like i don't take a social media fast but i'm very calculated with it i'm either using it to grow my business grow my relationships grow somebody else like pour into somebody else right i'm not there for entertainment mm. i'm not there to watch TikTok dances I, I i honestly i very 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 rarely if ever scroll i'm there for DMs, reply, comments, reply, and I'm out. That's it. So, like, eliminate these, these non-essential things in your life, right? Politics is another one. People get so hung up on politics. But, I, dude, if you're focusing on things you can't control, well, it's, it's, it's wasted focus. Oh, yeah, dude. You're depleting so much energy, man. You're out of control. Your life's out of control. I mean, that's just what it is. Fear comes from that kind of stuff, right? Anxiety comes from that kind of stuff. So... Dude, if you can't control politics, like you can't control anything there. I can't, either can you, you know? So it's like, eliminate that shit. I'm not thinking about, I'm just not thinking about it, you know? Yeah. I'm not focusing on, on like, do you think that I just sit in here and, and talk about the recession and fear of a recession? What's going to happen? No, dude, I live my life. Like, in my, ex in my opinion, anybody who's focusing on that, fearing about that, letting that hold them back, is what a convenient excuse as to why you're not growing your business. Like, honestly, you got to grow up, man. Like you can't focus on those things. Like I'm focusing on improving my circle and my world, which will inevitably bleed into other people's worlds. Yeah. That's what we got to focus on. Right. So eliminate the non-essentials essentially. So do a lot of times there's a lot of people that you just gave two really big things. Social media is a distraction and politics is a distraction that consumes a lot of people, totally. a lot of time for a lot of people. Yep. So how do we go about reprogramming those things that dominate us? Right. Those are just two examples of things yeah. that could totally take over your focus and deplete your energy completely. But what are, how do we, how do we reprogram those things? I love that question, bro. I love that question. Cause that's exactly what you have to do, right? You literally have to reprogram the mind yeah. and that takes energy. That takes focus. That takes due accountability. Right? Mm -hmm. So uh, you reprogram a couple ways. Like you have to, number one, you have to consciously, consciously, consciously feed your RAS. Your RAS is your reticular activating system, right? Reticular activating system is the bundle of nerves at the base of the brain stem that acts as the filter. And it only filters in things that it, the brain, that it deems important. Well, how does it determine what's important? Well, what you feed it regularly. So what are you feeding it, right? So you have to consciously feed your RAS things, people, resources, tools that are in line with your definite major purpose that are in line with where you're looking to go. That's a way to reprogram. Like at a basic level, there's only two things that you can control. You know, I was on a training call, a mentorship call with Ed Milet, and he mentioned that there's only two things you can control, your, which is your attitude and your activity, your actions, essentially. Your attitude and your actions. And if you look at it that simple, that's how you reprogram, dude. Yeah. So, so your attitude, your attitude is your outlook or optimism about something. It's your outlook or your optimism about something. Like, and I believe that way too many people, their attitude about their business is, it's circumstantial. You know what I mean? Like if things are going totally. good. Yeah. A hundred percent. If things are going good. It's butterflies and rainbows. Yeah. Their, yeah. Out, their attitude is freaking oh, yeah. phenomenal. Yep. It's when something switches and when something happens and when something knocks them on, off course that now their attitude shifts. Mm -hmm. Your attitude can't be circumstantial, especially about your business, especially about people too. Sometimes people's attitude towards people is circumstantial. My attitude towards people isn't circumstantial. Like, I love people. I believe in people. I believe that the far majority, the far majority of people are amazing people. Are amazing people. And if that is the attitude that you're putting out in the world, that is the energy that you will get back. 100%. Period. You've seen yeah. it time and time again. Oh, bro. I've seen it in your life a ton. I've seen it. Man, it's, it's a 
It's a powerful thing, man. It's a powerful thing. And yeah. you've also seen people go the opposite direction with it, where they get consumed by the negativity oh, and yeah. what it does for them. Yeah. Spiral. Spiral the other way. Yeah. You, you think and you make that for I think Emily talked about that at, at peak. Yeah. You make that first step towards positivity, you're going to spiral upward. Yeah, yeah. You make that first step towards negativity, it's going to spiral downward. Mm. So, 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 Gosh, so true. that's so good, dude. That's so good, dude. So be an optimist and feed your mind full of positive things. Feed your mind full of solutions. Like, I think that that's one of my greatest strengths. I think it's one of your greatest strengths, dude. Thanks, dude. It is, dude, yeah. is that you're an optimist. Yeah, oh, yeah. Like, you can see the bad, but you can still have this positive outlook about the bad. Yeah. Right? Totally. Like you can see it, you're not blind to it, you can see it, but you mm. can spin it and see the positive behind it. Yeah. That's a, that's a huge life hack. Like, and that hasn't always been the case for you, it hasn't always been the case for me. No. But it's definitely the case for us now, right? Because we've trained our RIS, we've reprogrammed our RIS, we have continued to feed things to our RIS, things, people, resources, tools, yeah. to reprogram the mind, man. Totally, and it's yeah. very, like, just to point out, thank you. I work really hard at that. To, to be positive and be an optimist. Yeah. A lot of people think you're just born an optimist, yeah. right? That you, oh, you're just an optimist. That's just who <laughs> you are. It's inside of you and that's what it is. Sure. No, it's something that has to be worked on constantly. Yeah. And the minute you stop working on it, the optimism goes away. Connor. It like doesn't like to hang out. It like doesn't like to hang yeah. out with those that don't give it attention. No. Like you have to be give optimism in all things, dude, yeah. in all things. So no, I, I love that, dude. What else? What do you do? What else? What are, what else are some of those other things that we can do to like, reprogram um i'm gonna hone in on that one more time yeah. one more thing though because your attitude isn't necessarily just being negative or positive right it's about protecting beliefs mm. it's about protecting your beliefs yeah especially your beliefs that are serving like way too many people protect their beliefs that aren't serving but you have to protect your beliefs that are serving for example I, one of my favorite books is the alchemist i'm sure i talk about the alchemist all the time good one but one of the first examples of this is he is in this, he sells all of his sheep, crosses over into Africa, he's going on pursuit of his definite major purpose, it's personal legend, right? And all of his money gets stolen. And he, now it's perspective, right? And he has to view, he has to determine, do I view myself as a poor victim of a thief or as an adventurer looking for my treasure? And a poor victim of a thief or adventurer looking for his treasure. Both of those are true outcomes, true perspectives. And valid. And valid. Very valid. So what does he do, though? He, de he determines to protect the belief that is serving. So first you have to, which one of these beliefs is serving? And you protect that, which is for that one, right? Which is that I'm an adventurer looking for his treasure. Yeah. You know, you protect those beliefs that are serving. So, for example, I know that I'm going to succeed. Like, I know that I'm going to succeed no matter what I'm doing. No matter what I'm doing, because that is a belief that I'm going to protect, because that's a belief that is serving. That's the belief I need to have. It's a belief I need to have. So no matter what floods in, right? When the noise floods in, the doubters say that I can't, a broker shoots me down, an investor, you know, uncommits, a student thinks I'm an asshole, somebody quits, it doesn't matter, dude, because I'm gonna find solutions because that's what I fucking do. I find solutions. I find solutions in the midst, in the midst of chaos. That's what I do. Yeah. That is a belief that I protect because I know that that belief is serving, right? So what are, what are those beliefs in your life? What are those standards that you have that are serving? And then protect those at all costs, dude. For example, my belief on people. Yeah. I do not care if you, you could tell, and I give zero shits on if it is actually factually correct or not. In my world, it's correct. People are amazing. You could tell me, well, actually, Tyler, the, the, st statistics, the, the statistics show that 60% of people are total assholes. Not my fucking world. Yeah. Not my world, dude. Yeah. In my world, it ain't it, dude. Why? Because I believe that what surrounds you is, is within you, right? Mm -hmm. I talk about that all the time. That's something I've learned from Ed Mindlet as well. What surrounds you is, is, with you, is within you. So what's in me, love, aloha, and belief in people. Right. So then what ends up happening? Love, aloha, belief in me and others, right? Yeah. So Dude, I love, I love how the alchemist paints that and I love how you just painted it too. That when things come our way, you get to decide. Totally. In dude. that moment, like it's, it's one of those, like it's not overlooked, but maybe that moment you don't realize how much power you hold. Yes. So yes. That's maybe what I wanted to point out is in that moment where you get to where like in the alchemist, was I just, was I, am I a victim of a thief or am I a poor man looking for his treasure? He got to choose. He got to decide. It's one of like, one of my favorite things of ownership is in that moment. It's like one of the most powerful things of ownership. Bro. That's in that moment, you get to decide, but also you, that means you get to choose the consequences yes. of that as well. Just so let you, that sink. That's a huge actionable, bro. Like you get to decide period. 
You get to decide. Yeah, it's powerful. Bro, that point, like literally that point you just said is massive, bro. Because it is. No matter the circumstance, no matter the situation, you get to decide. Yeah. Like people have to stop getting distracted on shit that doesn't matter. They have to decide, man. Like dude, I'm having this conversation and I won't name this name, but it's day one. Dude, we're about to day zero, right? The yeah. pre-networking event. And one of the first conversations as I come down the escalator is, man, I just don't know if there's any good deals out there, man. I'm looking at interest rates and I'm underwriting deals. And I just don't know if there's any good deals out there. Dude, if that is your belief, do you yeah, know what your gonna... RIS is going to do? Your RIS will feed you things, people, resources that will confirm that belief because your RIS also feeds you things that you believe in. So if you believe that there's no good deals out there, dude, how in the shit do you build a business with that belief? How in the shit do you build a meaningful life with that belief? You don't. You don't. So what do you need to do? You need to feed your RIS with beliefs that are serving, man, because you decide. You decide. You decide. You decide. I fucking decide, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely, man. So powerful. It's a powerful, it's a powerful principle that you hold so much more power than you realize you do. Totally. In man. those moments. Okay, Ty, what else? Maybe one more thing. One more thing. What do we do? What can we do to reprogram those those negative things that don't serve us? Um become obsessed with your daily repeatable tasks. This is something, remember mm. the the um meetup that we did across the street here yeah. when Brandon Turner came yeah. in. One of the things that I pulled from this is Brandon Turner. He was like, dude, listen, success is simple, man. Like it's not that hard. Like I have these daily repeatable tasks that I focus on and that's what I track every day is these daily repeatable tasks. So dude, become obsessed with your daily repeatable tasks. This is what, man, I love learning, man, but I not, I don't just love learning. I love learning and then applying. Mm -hmm. So what did I do from that? What did we do from that? We, we immediately I, came in and we defined. Was it that night? It was or the next day. That yeah. we, what our DRTs were. Yes. Yeah. DRTs, daily people tasks, man. So are you learning and are you applying? Number one. So Brandon, thank you for that. And then, dude, how obsessed have you been on your business activities, your daily repeatable tasks? Have you treated those like you would a lost child, right? Like think about something when something's lost that's important to you, yeah. dude, it takes all your attention. It does. Like you think if you're at a, at a game, you're at a stadium, right? You're at a ball game and somebody gets lost, your kid gets lost. Yeah. You quiet the noise very quickly. You have a million people around you, right? You have all these distractions, but what happens? You quiet that noise quickly. Why? Because you bring what is most important right in front of you. Totally. Where too, far, far too many people, man, bring the noise in front of them. And the most important things are the side, right? Yeah. You need to bring that most important thing in front of you. So how obsessed have you been on your business activities, your daily repeatable tasks? Have you treated those like a lost child or have you treated those like you are a lost child? Yeah. Have you ever been lost, by the way? Yeah, real, yeah, I have. Real quick. But before we dive into this, dude, you said we either focus on what's important or we let the noise mm. or we focus on the noise. Mm -hmm. And use that. This, I just wanted to, I just wanted to yep. like finish that thought up and use that as the excuse why this actually isn't that important. 100%. Or why you can't get there. It's or important, you but can't, you can't get there right, right. This. because this is more important though. Yeah. Because when you're focusing on this, you're giving it that power and you're deciding mm. that this bullshit's more more important yes. than actually what you say is more important. Mm. Huge, bro. So yes. let your actions determine what's actually important. Say it again. Let your actions determine what's actually Woo! important. Don't Preach, get, bro. You, but you know, but that's what happens, dude. That's it, dude. That's what happens. I can tell you, I can, I can tell very quickly what you really believe is most important. I don't exactly. care what you say. Dude. By what you do, you tell me what's really important. Exactly. Right? Yeah. Exactly. Love that shit. Dude. And you tell yourself what's important too, right? We talk about like we can see all these other things, right? People's actions determine what's actually important to them, but so do yours. <laughs> yeah. So do some self inventory on those things too. Yep. Like always be, yeah, always be checking in on those things for sure. Love it, dude. Love it. Okay, where were we? Sorry, you were gonna oh, have I ever been lost? Yes, I've been lost. When was the last time I was lost? I don't know. I was, probably, I was, probably, I was probably a little kid, honestly, the last time I was dude, lost. I remember I, my dad, my dad, we used to have a, uh, we used to try to go to one baseball game a year. And I remember we went to Seattle, a Seattle Mariners baseball game. And they were playing the Orioles, bro. And this was the year that Cal Ripken Jr. broke the most consecutive games played. That was the year. Uh, so I was, dude, and I love Cal. Like, this, Cal Ripken Jr., Ken Griffey Jr., like they're playing, right? Yeah. Jay Buhner. Remember Buhner? No. Well, you probably don't. <laughs> <laughs> you probably don't. I was going to just go along with it and be like, yeah, yeah, totally. Yeah, totally. Remember. So, 
Um, my dad goes to go get some treats. He's like, hey, stay in your seat. But then I go, but then I see like, I'm looking down and I see like, Calvary Queens Jr. is signing autographs. Sure. I'm like, oh shit. I got to capitalize, man. So I, my dad told me to stay seated, but listen, man. And I really thought about it, but I rolled down. Right, I rolled down to get an autograph. And I'm like, push myself in. But I'm young, dude. I'm probably Paxton's age, maybe yeah. maybe a little bit older. Eight, nine, ten, maybe. Sure. Right? And I push myself down, push myself down, get right in front. And I'm like, pretending like, I remember like I'm pretending like I'm like pushed against the fence, right? And I'm like, Cal, Cal, will you sign my, right? And he grabs my hat and he signs it. And uh, my dad told me like when I got back, right? I remember walking back up to the seat. And my dad was like, oh my gosh, where have you been? I was like, I got Cal Ripken Jr.'s autograph, you know? Yeah. And I remember him being like, dude, I was, I was terrified. Like I was terrified. But listen, I'll be honest, that Cal Ripken Jr. autograph is still one of my favorites to this day. Yeah. I just got it back from my mom's house like a month ago. That's awesome. Which I'm pumped about. But listen, do you want, you want to know what my dad did in that moment? My dad sat his ass in his seat in that moment, hoping that I'd come back. He didn't go looking for me. He didn't go searching for me. He sat his ass in his seat, hoping that I'd come back. And that might seem funny, but how many of us are just sitting in on our ass, hoping <laughs> that business will just magically come to us? How much are just sitting there, hoping that business will just magically come to us, hoping that the most important things will just come to the front? You think I'm just sitting there waiting around? No. I mean, just waiting around, man. You, you, you want to know, there's so many people relying on us to take action, man. So many people relying on us to take action. You think I'm just going to sit back and wait? Get the fuck out of here, dude. You think I'm just going to let distractions get in the way? Dude, no. Like, we have to go out and get what we're looking to get. It's our job to go get it, right? Yeah. It's our job to decide. Like, what's crazy, man, is a lot of people, and I think this is all on the forefront because we just got back from peak and you, we speak to so many people, right? And there's so many people making headway. And there's so many people that are just getting distracted by the noise, but there's so many people that are still even making headway despite the distractions, but they don't even recognize the distractions. Like, dude, can you imagine like what will really happen when they actually start to recognize them? Yeah. Some people have this belief that it's hard to succeed right now, but dude, I believe it's easier than ever to succeed right now because people are so damn distracted, man. So what's your outlook, man? What's your outlook and how's that affect affecting your actions? So good. So, so good. Ty, how do you deal with, how do you deal with individuals in your circle that bring negativity and noise to your goals? Um, do you like do you find do you find it disrespectful? Do you like what like what are, what are your thoughts there? Do you know I think it's disrespectful? Are you allowing those people to bring to consistently bring negativity and noise to your goals? Expand on that. Um, do Do you know anybody in my circle that brings negativity and noise to my goals? Mm, uh, not, I mean, not that I know of, no. Now, have they happened? Have they been there? Yeah. Sure. But did you purge anything in your life that's not serving? Yeah. You have to be able to purge anything in your life that's not serving. Now, listen, that could be people, certainly. And some of you are like, what? What about family? Once again, man, if you don't take care of yourself, you'll never be able to take care of family. Yeah. You have to be, dude, in the beginning, you're trying to gain strength, man. Yeah. Like right now, somebody could come in my inner circle that brings negativity, that's br that brings noise, and I can handle it a lot better than most people. Why? Because I've built up a layer of thick skin. Yeah. A layer, dude. And now it's my job to help them, right? But in the beginning, you got to help yourself. So, but what can you eliminate, dude? Conversations is an example. Both internal conversations that you're having with yourself and external conversations that you're having with others. Mm -hmm. How are they? Like if you truly pay attention to it, how yeah. are they? Yeah. Give you an example. We go to do an event in, oh my gosh, where was I? I think it was Denver, man. And I'm talking about this. I'm talking about conversations, negative conversations, and how we just hone in on, on negative little, little aspects and feed into it, and how we can't do it, right? right. And then we walk in this ballroom that, we had, that had been booked. It was definitely in Denver. Denver. And it was a sh it was a shit ballroom, dude. I mean, it just was. Like, it just was, man. Yeah. They, and, they, and I immediately walk in, and I'm like, oh, my gosh, what the shit? And Jed Johnson's like, oh, what's this? This ballroom is going to be a massive success, bro. Really? You're going to focus on that you don't like the color of the tablecloths, and you don't like the – I'm like, thank you, man. Good check. 
But we need to be checked because half the time, most of the time, 99% of the time, we don't even recognize what we're doing. Sometimes we want to be able to catch ourselves in error and thinking, right? But we need somebody to help us catch ourselves in error and thinking. That's your circle. But if you haven't aligned yourself with an inner circle that values the same things you do, well, you're fucked. Yeah. So purge anything in your life that's not serving. People who distract you, your conversations that distract you, activities that distract you, your behaviors that will distract you. Like you don't have times for those things, those thoughts, or those people. You don't, dude. And until you purge them, you'll never progress and grow. So purge them, dude. They don't exist in my circle, nor will they ever. I want to highlight one thing that you just said, dude. So powerful and so true. I asked this question and you rephrased it. And I want to point out the rephrasing that you did. I said, do you feel like it's disrespectful? Or do you feel like it's disrespectful for people to bring you these goals? And you said, I feel it's disrespectful for people to constantly bring me these things. And when you said that, the first thing that I thought was like, oh, constantly. So if you take tie an issue... That has that's not serving him chances are he's going to correct you chances are he's going to use that as a moment of teaching like hey this isn't actually a serving problem let me let me let me teach you yeah right because like I, I think a lot of times people can hear purge anything that's not serving you you just get him out of here sure but you when you said the word constantly that's when you have to start doing some purging and you have to start doing totally. some you have to start doing some some taking away right yeah that's what I understood is yeah. you like, you don't just like get rid of your friends and your family and these business people that you've been working with for forever because no. you've decided this. Yeah. Just no. Yeah. You have that moment. You yeah. take that moment. You teach you like you, you, you educate. Totally. It's one of the, like one of the things that I've loved about you. Thanks. Brother. And one of the things I love about you is that like, you don't, you don't just cut people off. Yeah. You know what I mean? You don't, but you teach them and you like help them along. Totally, and yeah, then yeah. they make the decision. And actually how I really rephrased it was, I think it's disrespectful when you as a person continue to allow people to consistently that's bring That's what I meant, yes, yes, right? yes, yes. So if you're allowing that in your, own, uh, in your own life consistently, that's your own fault, man. Exactly, dude. Yeah. Because you take that time to make the correction. That's it. And then it stops coming as much. That's it, dude. But, so you, but most people won't make the correction because they feel like it may be negative or it feels like that may hurt that person's feelings. Like, no, I'll make the correction, dude. Because it's yeah. most serving for it's them. It's the most serving, loving thing you can do for somebody, dude. And yourself. Yeah. To help you get to your goals. No, I love it. I love it. Last question, Ty. In moments like this, like how do you, how do you fortify your mind? I love that. Um, I'll give you one, one tactic, okay? Which is visualization. Mm. You have to visualize, man. You have to visualize. You have to picture those things that are most important to you. And like literally force yourself to get a clear image of what that is. And what I mean, like I literally mean a clear image of what that is. Like you have to, you know how I mentioned how we need to bring it to the forefront. Yeah. I will literally visualize that, bro. Like I'll visualize, like close my eyes. And this might seem funny, dude. And some people may discount this kind of stuff, dude. You cannot discredit. You can't. It literally it works, man. So I will visualize whatever is most important, right? Bring it to the forefront bring it to the fore, visualizing it in detail, dude. I'll bring it from the, cause you're, you're not just a stagnant thing, right? I'll bring it here. I'll go here, here, side, side. Like I'm visualizing it. I am swear my life. I learned That's this awesome. from, I don't even know who I learned this from, but books that I've read, mentorship programs I've been aware of. I don't even know where I learned it from, Yeah. but this is what I learned. And when I started to implement this stuff, and this is really what I'm doing in my meditation, if I'm being honest, like there's meditation where I clear my mind, and then there's meditation where I put on that song by M83 called Midnight Souls Remain. It's a 12 minute song and I visualize these things. I visualize what's most important, bring it forward, back, side. Like I'm visualizing it, okay? I also put sounds there, colors there, feelings there. Like once again, when I anchor, right? That's a form and a way for me to continue to visualize that in the future. You think that in my next keynote, when I'm trying to get ready for my next keynote, that I won't do this? and visualize the crowd at peak partnership at the end, all standing, all freaking giving me a, you know, standing ovation. Like, you kidding me, man? That stuff brings new things to the forefront, brings new things, brings your future to you, you know? Yeah. So visualize it, man. I visualize in the shower too, by the way. To, brings your future to you. Sorry, I just wanted to re-say that so I can yeah, remember it. Yeah, brings your future to you. It really yeah. does. Yeah. It really does. It's powerful. Think about in the shower. Like, you ever, here's what I used to do in the shower. I used to listen to, like, podcasts in the shower. Yeah. I don't do it anymore, man. I listen to either music or I just don't listen to anything because yeah. I don't know about you. Like some of my best ideas come in the shower. I do. Yeah, no, I've, I've yeah, I, I'm the same. Nothing. I have no nothing going on in the shower. Just me. But do you want to know why that happens? It's because you're in this tight space. 
where there's no distractions, you're usually alone. Usually, not, not always alone, Brit. You know, what nice I mean? a little vixen. <laughs> <laughs> but when I am alone, tight space, no distractions. Bathrooms like this too, right? Yeah. It's a perfect spot for us to visualize, right? So, yeah. So visualize. Listen. Last thing I'll say is this: all you can do is all you can do, man. But all you can do is enough. All you can do is all you can do, but all you can do is enough. And I just believe that. Yeah. I just believe that. Like you have, you know, ET said something. He said, people, people need to know people have everything that it takes, but people don't realize that it takes everything they have. People mm. have everything that it takes, but people don't realize it's, it's going to take, take everything they have, man. Yeah. The question becomes like, are you doing all that you can do? Mm. Are you doing the things that we just spoke about? Right. Are you doing those? And if the answer, and if the answer, if you're answering that with certainty, like, yes, the dude, awesome, dude, you had a great day. But if you're not doing all those things, oh man, re, reprogram, man, refocus, recommit, doing all those things. Like, but I think that all of us can agree that we can do those things more. We can double down on those things. We can start eliminating distractions. We can, so here's your actionables, right? Eliminate your distractions. Start by eliminating the distractions. Then intentionally feed your RAS with the attitudes and the actions that you need to be taking visualize the right things and then become aware of any distraction or limiting thought that you have and purge it from your freaking life. You do those things and you do them constantly and continually. You will have peace of mind, man. You will have solace. You'll be able to quiet the mind and freaking light a fire underneath your ass to accomplish amazing things. Powerful stuff. Tyler, thank you so much. Thank you, bro. This is, such, this this is like, this is like, I feel like a, we like peeled back the curtain to a lot of things yeah. today like behind the scenes type things of like what you can do to really, to really propel yourself, propel yeah. your business to growth. Dude, I just want to encourage everybody before we end here, make sure you're listening, make sure you're sharing. Like Tyler puts time and effort into these. And I think one way, a fantastic way to be able to give back to Tyler and say, thank you is to share, is to, is to share this, leave us a rating and review so we can, so we can touch as many people as, as we can. Yeah. And then go put them to, at, to work. Yes. Yes. Obviously go right. put these things. Yeah. That's going to be, that's going to be the most to you yeah. is, is learning these things and going to put them, putting them to action. Ty, as we end here, a Hawaiian value for today. Yeah. What's Malama. Okay. Malama. Tell them what Malama means. Malama is to care for, it's to protect, to care for, pr to protect, to nurture. Right? So uh, Malama, means to focus on the needs and well-being of both the individual and of the whole. Sometimes people, you'll hear it with malama ka'aina, which means to care for the land. Mm -hmm. But man, we need to live this principle of malama in every aspect of our lives. Every aspect of our lives. Like we find ourselves, when we do that, like when we do live malama, when we truly care for ourselves, when we truly care for others, when we care for everything, well then what happens, like the most important things, right? then what happens is we find ourselves. We find our purpose and we find meaning in our lives and then we help other people do the same thing. So Malama, dude, to care for, protect, and nurture the things that are most important in our lives. Malama. Yeah. Beautiful. There you go. Thank you, sir. Thank you, homie. Hey, go share, go review, uh, go leave a comment, whatever it is. But man, anything you, you want to say before we wrap this thing up though? No, man, just very grateful. Very grateful for the things that we covered today. I don't, I don't have anything mind blowing to share here at the end other than you like you're silly if you don't put these things to work totally you're silly it's easy things that we can do that we can change and these small changes can make the mad the most the biggest of differences 110 dude yeah. pick one of these things and apply it man absolutely and then live always with loa peace <laughs>